You're going to make us sound like we made foolish decisions. No, I, 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 I might. So, so Matt, they, they were <laughs> heading out. You guys had decided at the end of the last session, we're going to go see the Sorcerer Pollock. We're going to find out stuff towards uh, finding out about the Torrent Stall and, and uh, doing this quest. And they were sailing along. And uh, they sailed along, and there were some... There were some rough patches in terms of their sailing and uh, some rough weather, and uh, uh, Sherry tried to drown herself. Um, I did. And so so they all lost some recoveries. Um, <laughs> I lost twice as many. Yes. Uh, but uh, they, they went along, and they were sailing along through the various islands, and I was talking about the fact that with the, the great dying off at the beginning of the century with the death of the Empress, a lot of these islands and towns had been abandoned. Um, just it, background fluff, just background Purely. fluff and stuff. And Carl started asking about that, and you know, what kind of islands are we seeing? What are we doing? Da, da, da. And eventually, uh, Ben, with his eagle eye, his eye is drawn, and you see an, saw an island with clearly a town that had been abandoned, but there's also a castle there, and they could see that the sort of the sea gates had been closed. And the group kind of went, well, maybe we should go check it out, you know, and maybe we could go just take a look. Mostly Carl. <laughs> and uh, so the group went in and they, they reached the, the shoreline about dusk. And uh, they went and they found that the town had, had, there were these markings on the walls that had been time and tide had really worn them down so they couldn't read them. Um, uh, but eventually they found a place to, to sleep for the night that had uh, a decent amount of, of cover. And so they settled in for the evening and uh, in the middle of the night, uh, I believe it was Scott and Sherry were on watch. Yes. Um, and they were alerted, and they looked outside, and they saw a horde of figures uh, approaching their site and uh, uh, soon realized that, in fact, it was a, a roving pan band of ghouls. Um, and there were about 18 or so of them. Um, Nothing good ever comes in a horde. Yes. <laughs> um, and and so Ben Ben let loose and was using his arrows to to pepper the mooks um, and had a big fight and uh, one of the the ghouls was firing acidic vomit and uh, there was a ghast there and so they had the big fight they took a lot of damage and stuff but they were able to recover um, and they killed all the ghouls before they got away because um, clearly some of them were retreating back um, and uh, the group moved to another location. Um, and uh, got themselves together, and they are a little down on on hits and recovery, um, but they are intact. You are at full mat, um, uh, and uh, the group is there. It is morning on this island. They have not yet gone up to explore the castle or to do anything further in this in this abandoned town, and that's where we take up. Seem reasonable? Am I saying that right, guys, or did I miss any important details? All right, and also, I'm half dead. Ben was half dead, but you took some recoveries. You are, I believe, let me look at your She, I believe Kathak is at uh, 38 out of 52 hit points right now. Ben, FYI, you sound right now like you're in a bathroom with a bucket on your head. Yeah, I know. <laughs> because, because he is in a bathroom with a bucket on his head all right so you guys are gathered together you've got your your stuff there um you you have your cleric back now while you're fighting un undead potentially um what do you guys want to do uh well there's the off chance that we could find some information about what happened around the time immediately following the Empress um, Empress's disappearance so it might be worth it going to the castle well we've already come this far well that's true that so yes I think you guys should obey the sunk cost fallacy um. oh yes <laughs> That we've killed the monsters, now there's loot waiting for us. That's what I'm going with. Yeah, because they're all dead, that's for sure. Okay. I didn't see no more. I'm just oh. hoping I finally get a chance to use turn undead. 
Oh, that was, of course, the irony. <laughs> yes. We were there. <laughs> yes, there was a, a certain amount of, of uh, gnashing of teeth uh, because there was an undead to be fought, and the cleric was not among the party. So how do you guys want to proceed? Let me kind of describe the, the, the layout here. Um, again, the, the town that you're in is uh, stone. Buildings are, are left intact, but clearly uh, the, the, the place has been overrun by storms over the years. Uh, most of the wood here is rotted and uh, um, uh, disintegrates uh, under touch. Um, but you're able to find uh, a, a modicum of shelter. There is uh, a kind of a, a cliffs around the city and a pathway that leads up to the, the, the castle. Most of what you can see from here are the walls. Uh, now it's and, daylight now, right? Yeah, it is morning. Um, and uh, the walls sort of go at the top of the, the cliffs there. Um, so you could easily uh, check out the, the town now that it's daylight uh, more thoroughly. You could uh, uh, do other investigations. You could head back out. You could head up the way to the castle. What do you think you guys want to do? Castle, castle, castle. <laughs> All right. Uh -huh. we're, we're, we're adventurers. How can we resist the castle? Okay. Exactly. I'm merely bowing to the uh, you, inevitable you, you, here. You humies. <laughs> You're the... <laughs> You're the one that got us here. Yes. <laughs> I, I was following <laughs> the dropped hint. Drop came by twice, and I was like, okay. Don't let me hit it if he says it three times. Oh, okay. Excellent. Okay, um, okay, we'll go up to the castle. Um, and uh, I'll lead um, as we're going up, and uh, I guess Scott will come up and, you know, check out any doors that we're coming up and seeing if it's. Wait, we'll follow the follow the way the ghoul, the ghouls went. Okay. Oh, no, they, that they were going. That's right. They were going. All right. Well, let me have. Uh, let me kind of get a very rough map here for you guys. Did we get another incremental advance last time? Yes, we yes, did. Yes, we did. Yes. Okay. So I'll give you a kind of a just a rough, so we get a kind of a positional. Map. Matt gets one too, but you know he's uh, he only gets it on um on uh, wrestling moves. Right. Um, also, guys, uh, note that I discovered that there is a, an automated die roller. Um, if you look on the sidebar, just above the question mark, that one above it is in the shape of a die. And so we've been playing for two years, and I hadn't noticed that, uh, but I found that. Where is it? Uh, you know, right above the question mark. Right above the question mark on the sidebar. On the little floating menu. If you click on that, then you can do your rolls pretty easily there if you don't have macro set up. Still not seeing a whole lot of it. I see it. Upper I'm just left, rolling. right hand corner, left hand corner. On the left top corner, Scott, there should be that sidebar with all the buttons on it. Yes, but I don't see a question mark. Oh, okay, there. And the one above, surrounded it, by a circle. The one above it oh, yeah. is the is the die roller. I'm clicking on it, but I'm not rolling it. Uh, so you, have you opened up the die roller? Because it opens up a little window for you to specify some. Oh, stuff. hey, woo, crazy. <laughs> <laughs> I missed that one. Um, and if you want to add, a, if you look under advanced roll there, you can click up your bonus and then hit the D20 and thing and have that roll for you. Uh, okay. So there you guys go. So that should make. Is it roll better? Pardon? No, no. It's just as bad. It is just as random as the as, as the roll twenty dice, so so they will be unkind to you. Okay, so why don't we have uh, a couple of rolls here, Ben? Why don't you make your wisdom plus recon roll? I believe. Um, uh, so Ben will be checking the tracks. Uh, maybe there's a couple other spottings that you want to do. You want to tell me what you're looking for, and make a roll based on that. Does that include your background and your wisdom plus level? Yeah, yeah, it does. What is your background value for Scout? Uh, three. And what's your wisdom bonus? Three. And what's your level? Uh, four. Four. 
So that would be a plus 10, actually, and not a plus 6. I thought the wisdom already counted the... The lower one counts it in. Oh, yeah, my lower number is 3. Lower number is 3 there. Let me look here at Kathak. No, oh, yeah, because you have a minus 1 wisdom. That's right. Yeah, so your total is that. Okay. Oh. All right. Um, the Black Ranger. So, uh, Kathak can generally say that, yes, the ghouls have come back and forth from the castle. But beyond that, he's unable to tell you more. Anybody else want to make any kind of uh, perceptions or search checks or anything like that as you head from town up to the castle? Well, it is a undead thing. Huh. I don't know much about necromancy, though, but I am a preservationist. Isn't undeath a sort of preservation? There are certain necromancers that would tell you that they are purely involved in the art of preservation. <laughs> All right. Uh, well, I guess I could roll on that. My, what, intelligence or wisdom? Uh, let's see. So you're looking for more for lore, right? Yes. Okay. Essentially, what should I expect for if there's ghouls and stuff? Uh... Sure. Why don't you make that roll for me? Okay. So here we go. Um, I'm going to do that. My wisdom is seven. And then I have preservationist at. So that's ten. Oh. <laughs> God, uh, I give up. I'm not going to stop rolling yeah. out this. Mistake. So the one thing you will know uh, is yes. that ghouls are particularly dangerous because, uh, unlike a lot of the undead types, they are contagious. Um, uh, you know, a lot of the other stuff is necromantic magic that brings them up and things like that. Ghouls um, happen, um, and if they if they bite someone and that person dies, that person can come back as a ghoul. Um, that is uncool. And 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 they're they're flesh eaters. They live in under tunnels. Um, if they get into an enclosed environment like a ship or whatever. Um, they can wreak havoc on it essentially because they'll 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 do that. And there are legends about that kind of thing occurring, like horrible ghost ships and stuff. Yes, but they're actually ghoul ships. Yes, turtle ships. Remind me again, which of our party got bit last time? Well, nobody died, so you guys were able to clean. Wait, wait, wait! I think one of us did die. But he didn't. No. He didn't oh, go to God. final death. Oh, that's what they tell you. That's what they tell you. Um, so that's that's what you guys will will know about that. Um, any other is checks? There, is there any lore that um, that tells us uh, are ghouls associated with any of the icons? I mean, I know the Ageless Hag has repopulated um, different uh, places that were swept. Away. Right. The the those undead are not in, uh, in Ageless Hag's sort of She's more wheelhouse. Uh, pr primarily because she is more about living things. Um, uh, certainly uh, the war singer, uh, the siren, the leviathan have all trucked in that kind of, of work. Um, the, it, uh, though it is more... The leviathan and siren are probably the most likely to use ghouls as active agents. Or things for the for the war singer, uh, that's the kind of thing that's sort of out of control, so it wouldn't be his his methodology. Okay, then I will um, use my. That's well, I guess I don't shit about that. I've got my my contact with Le, or my whatever my whatever the hell it, relationship with Leviathan. Um, I, I guess that it's not going to help me do anything, right? Uh. Well, uh, you can always... It would be more if, if you were in a place where you yeah, could, could find fine. agents or things like that. Yeah, that's fine. Okay. So we would go up. we got two doors, and we got two side entrances. Uh, so what you guys have got is, as we sort of head up this uh, walkway here... Um, and let me kind of unselect. Yeah, do a little ping on that walkway. Sure. Can you so this is yeah. the the walkway up. You guys are coming up the hill, and it's it's pretty steep. Um, uh, you can tell that there have, this place has been blasted by several pretty heavy storms over the years. 
Um, so you have to be careful. A lot of the, the, the stair here uh, is, is sort of crumbling um, and damp as you make your way up along here and you will see that there are walls of the castle and I've drawn it square but it kind of angles around uh, and it does look like there's there are, would have been great wooden doors um, but those have come off their hinges um, they are just laying there um, and the sort of the the two towers here that I put represent the sort of the two sides of the gatehouse um, and then the, the sort of the, the courtyard and there's some debris on the, the other side. Um, so let's get a marching order, why don't we, here. Okay. Let's I'll assume have my two by two, right? Yeah. That's okay. Um, so uh, Black Dog's at front. I'll go first. I'll have my shield out. Okay. Who's next to you, Black Dog? Uh, I should probably uh, be next to you to look, to, to look for traps. I assume you want me to look okay. for traps. Okay. And then, who is in the second row? Um, how about, let's see here. Um, well, how about I drop back with the archer? Okay. Um, we'll be in the back, and then we put the cleric in the middle, so okay. he can get, so it's easy for him to heal any of us. Sure. Um, Coach Chanel, if you have any uh, cool little... Uh, cantrips like you've been using to help us out open doors and things like that that's just give us a shout out ah let's see here my cool well i mean i don't think we, i don't think we need them right now but um so uh i can uh, i can block doors <laughs> okay, that i can i can blow a door up well but. i mean the rope trick thing is really cool i mean that's yes good. and we can make use of that at any time so no i always keep my con my cantrips out so don't you worry uh Carl and yeah. Scott, why don't you guys both make uh, wisdom plus sort of what do you have for, for physical scouting like? Do you have any kind of soldier or anything like that? Mm, pirate. Pirate, okay. Uh, well, that, that seems reasonable. That's what I got to. Okay. Or thief. I mean, if I'm scouting for traps. Yeah, I'll have you roll thief. Oh, there we go. Oh, I, they're right there. I didn't know exactly what's going on. He Even knows everything. Okay. Actually, you know about this castle. You just realized it. Is I've been here before. You know the lore. And uh, Scott, why don't you make a roll for me? Holy cow! <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> All right, Lowell. It says, turn around, you stupid idiots. <laughs> you guys no, the, castle, the castle said get out. <laughs> you guys will move up into the sort of the, the, the archway here of the, the castle. Um, you see like the, the stone gatehouses here are relatively intact. And I'm going to tell you three or four significant things that you guys will pick up with your natural 20s there. Number one, um, it does look like uh, uh, that the sort of the tower of the castle, the thing you see, saw from a ways away, um, uh, that is, how do I put this? Uh, that is sort of st still standing, but the rest of the sort of the under castle has kind of collapsed. Um, it looks like it must have been a combination of, of lightning and storm that knocked a good deal of that. And, and so you've got this big gray mass of, of ruins. There are some standing walls and things like that, but overall a lot of it is collapsed. A lot of the walls are intact, and it looks like the stairs and the walkways up to those are relatively intact. Um, you'd actually say that the castle might have been brought down by perhaps some kind of magic. Um, and not that it's not as old as the other destruction around here. That, that castle collapse is maybe, you would guess, 10 or so years old. Huh. Um, the other thing you will note is that there are, of course, the tracks around in here, the fresh tracks of the ghouls and things that you'll pick up in the various mud and sand that's around here. You'll see the, the barefoot, you know, long, you know, pointy nailed toes and all of that that you, you saw down below. But you will see a couple of sets of tracks in here that are more shod, that 
have boots that are on that are also more recent, going back and forth. Uh, finally, um, about about how um, about how many boots? I mean, can we make an estimate? Uh, or I get the, we can get the tracker to look at those later. Y- yeah, <laughs> you would say uh, at least two different pairs, maybe more. Um, and with your natural twenty, not in good condition. Like like very bad condition boots, um, so might not be a human being. Might actually be another kind of undead. Mm, right. Um, the two gatehouses that are here, um, uh, Scott, you're kind of checking them out. One of them seems like the 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 sort of gatehouse on the left hand side is sort of completely collapsed, uh, kind of torn down. Um, it almost looks like maybe. Judging by the claws and stuff, like the ghouls tore it, the interior sort of wooden structures out. Uh, Trying to get to someone? No, it looks like they, well, maybe, but it more looks like they, they just kind of collapsed it. However, the wooden structures on the other gatehouse, while the stairs going up are torn down, um, it does look like there's maybe, you know, uh, up about... 12 feet, there's the end of a set of stairs sort of hanging in the air, and that goes up to what looks like might be an intact gatehouse section. Uh, and certainly the, the door on the floor on the underside there is is shut. Um, the other thing you'll notice, Scott, is there are a few things kind of set up and around that are clearly intended as noisemakers. Um Nothing fancy in terms of traps, but objects and things set up that, you know, the the the, the uncautious might knock them over and it would great, create a great clamor. Um, you can easily, with your natural 20, disarm those from the pathway for yourselves. Um, before I get to them? Hold on, yes. before we do that, um, do we want to do a setup where we get all set up, ready to go, make basically, and then have a whole bunch of guys come out and then we murder them. I don't know if that's going to work and I don't know if we have anything that can really take them out like that. Um, well, well, with a I, little I, planning. I guess it... Or, or we can just be quiet. I mean, you know, that, that works just as well. Let's see here. Does anyone have fire magic? Yeah, no, don't got that. What about what about your chain lightning, Ben? I mean, does that work very well, or what does that do? Essentially, if he rolls a certain amount when he hits the first target, he has this chance it will it can go on to a second target. So that would be like two or three, not like twenty. Right. Eight. So, so. So the intact gate, describe that again. The, the, sure, the sure. Gate. So imagine that it's a square gatehouse, okay? Okay. That goes up about 30 feet up to the wall and, you know, built on. You would normally have a door here that goes in and you would walk upstairs to get to the upper part of the gatehouse. And the door is gone and the bottom part of the stairs going about 12 feet are gone. Clearly ghouls tore that up. But there's still a bit of stair hanging. Um, and it looks like the wooden floor for the gatehouse above is still intact. So there's an, uh, so an there upper room. S- oh, okay. So I, so I guess there's that to explore that hasn't been ghoul touched, and then finding the the non ghoul people in here, finding out if they have something to do with the ghoul or. If well, they, those could also be undead. Obviously, the ghouls aren't bothering them, or they're able to elude them. Well, somehow. yeah, they could be. They could be other undead. They could be zombies or skeletons. You know, I mean, undead that didn't take their boots off. <laughs> they died with their boots on. Uh, so let me ask Matt. What do you want to do? Um, I mean, uh, right now, I think. Tommaso's main uh, drive here is that he, having caught, like, you know, sight of the undead, he wants to make sure we stamp out the undead. So I guess, can I investigate more? You genocidal bastard. 
see if anything anything that you know there's any evidence that like uh, the clerical skill sets might tell me more about what we're dealing with. Sure. Why don't you make a roll for me? Or what type of roll is that? Um, what what is your good appropriate sort of priest training? That would be my uh, hospitaler. Okay. Uh, uh, so that plus intelligence. All right. So that's five plus zero. Uh, Um, so you will kind of look around. Um, one of the things it does look like uh, the the ghouls must come out of the sort of the ruins of the castle itself, but there are clearly a couple of other access points for them, and I'll put little X's. How about for that? Um, but the awesome. But the other thing you will note, Ben, is sort of in the mud here, as you're kind of walking around, uh, uh, you will find a necklace, um, and you will kind of kind of pick it up out of the mud, um, and you will see a marker of the surgeon penitent. Hmm. Interesting. Um. It's his zombies. <laughs> He's led us here. He's trapped us. Or someone got killed here. Another yes, surgeon penitent. Or Matt's a traitor. Oh, Matt. Why would you do that? Oh, you're right. yeah, yeah, it's like Tommaso. Uh, roll 20 makes it really easy to pass notes to the DM. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> um, now, the zombie hole will attack you. Uh, I am the next monster king. Uh, and you know there are different kinds of ghouls. There are uh, 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 some more potent ones, but that's probably what you'll get with the, the, the 16. Does that seem reasonable? Yeah, that seems fair. Okay. Um, Carl, Sherry, Matt, back at the gatehouse. Okay. Yeah. Uh, so, okay, the gatehouse is going up, but the second floor is, looks, you said it looks better. Yeah. And, and, and you would guess there are, you have three ways to get up there. Okay. Um, well, did you see any, you know, um, noise maker traps? Um, did we disarm, disarm any, or did we see any there? They were on the ground, so you've, you've disarmed any ones that are around down there. That's fine. Okay. Okay. So we didn't see any on the... Okay, so we, there's three ways to get up the... Um, <laughs> yeah. One would be to climb up the walls inside and kind of get up to that hanging stair and push mm -hmm. that door open. Another one would mm -hmm. be to climb on the outside and get up to one of the, the window slits. Mm -hmm. um, and the other way would be to climb up onto uh, the wall and come up uh, through the door that connects from the, the, the wall uh, and the walkway to the, the tower. And the other way um, would be to levitate. Yes. And since, uh, yes. Well, and co now you can do that? Yes, of course. Um, okay, can you, uh, there may be something in there. You want? Uh, can you be surreptitious about it, or do you want to like do your rope trick and have somebody climb up? Um, well, I could do either of those. The rope trick cost me nothing. The levitate is a utility spell slot. I don't know what that means. It means that I will have spent one of my utility spells. Mm. Now, I have multiples of those, but... I don't know what that means. <laughs> <laughs> I'll, I'll do the rope trick. How about that? Oh, I, I understand that. Okay. Okay, um, okay so um, who um, looks like that um, I, I think... Uh, yeah, that's fine. So, uh, Sherry will assume you'll you'll send the rope up and, and you know grab onto a, a, a like uh, a stone banner post up there. Exactly, something that used to kind of go across. Okay. That looks pretty sturdy. Okay, so Scott, why don't you make a climb roll, uh, dexterity plus the appropriate skill, and I'll give you a plus plus two circumstance bonus for Sherry's rope. Um, and uh, no, no possibility, f even if you roll a one, of taking damage. We'll say from the rope as well. Except so, uh, so for a rope burn. The rope will not attack you. Mostly. He hangs himself on the rope as Sherry forms it into a noose. Here, I can bring you up. Uh, so you will uh, 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 make your way up um, and. Uh, climb and kind of look in the the, the sort of arrow slit here, um, 
and inside you will see I mean, an aeroslit is not particularly big enough to, to climb through, and, uh, but you are a thief, so maybe you could contort your way through. It looks like there's a room. Um, it, you can see there's some wreckage in there, like a broken desk and that kind of thing. Um, the door to the uh, wall is shut, but sort of in the light that's kind of coming in here, you will see two things. One is clearly a body, uh, sort of uh, uh, leaning against the wall, old and desiccated, um, uh, with with some stuff. Doesn't look like a ghoul or undead. Looks like someone that died there. You would guess based at maybe in the last decade or so. Um, and then there's just sort of the faint glow that you associate with magical wards as a, a thief. On the door? Uh, going around, as you see that kind of haze as the light kind of catches through the window. You would guess that someone's put some kind of magical warding on the room. If I dis I describe it to Tommaso, does it seem like some sort of anti-undead warning, or does it actually see seem like... Tommaso would probably have to come up and look at it. Mm. I Let's can do I, it. I can climb up there, and then we can pull him up if he's not a good climber. I'm probably not a good climber, but um, well, we could. We if we get the rope up there, and we got two of us up there, we can put, pull you up pretty easy. Well, why don't you uh, make a simple strength roll for me there, Tommaso? Oh, so if we use strength, oh, strength is good then. Uh, all right, roller, where are you? All right, yeah. twenty plus. So it will. We'll take a bit. Did you add your level into that, too? A level? No. Okay. So that would be another four. So you'll get up to the window. I mean, it's a little... It, things around here are still wet, so it's a little bit to, to get you up there, to pull you up. And you'll look in, you'll definitely get that sense of a kind of a, a very basic uh, clerical magic ward, uh, probably warding it particularly against the, the ghouls that uh, had... You guess that person who's in there, the dead body, is probably the person who did this. And it uh, the symbology has remained since he died. It's pretty potent. All right, can I uh, check to see is this uh, the person that the uh, holy symbol that I found belonged to? Is there any indication of that? Well, uh, you'd have to be, you'd yeah. have to go into the room itself to to do that. Um. Well. I guess I explained to the guys that I think this is important enough that I have to uh, check it out. Uh, so if nobody has anything else they want to do, I'm, I'm going to head in. We think that this needs to be handled too, she says. So we will, we will cut to you guys uh, on the wall. Um, Scott, why don't you make a detect traps roll for me? No. There's some very very basic bracing on the other side that you know how to get around uh, with a simple flick of your dagger to get it, and eventually you'll get this this oak door that has remained relatively solid um, uh, open and kind of creaks in, and you guys will see this kind of guard room that uh, has been abandoned for a century, and this person who died maybe a decade ago... Uh, sort of uh, there in the corner. Uh, you can tell he kind of desperately ran in here. There are claw marks on the outside of the door. So you think the ghouls tried to get in here but weren't able to get past the warding. Matt, you will check the body out, I assume? Mm-hmm. Okay. And you will see uh, he's, he's definitely got his own marker of the surgeon penitent. Um, so the marker that you found clearly doesn't belong to him. Mm -hmm. uh, a whole group of people. Uh, but and there's he has robes and light leather armor on. Uh, the, most of his pack stuff has sort of rotted and gone. Um, but you will find uh, in one 
uh, of the leather pouches that he does have a set of potion bottles that are uh, wrapped up. Um, and there's also a note that he penned. Mm -hmm. and Get out. Uh, I'm going to show you guys the note. Ooh. You can, Props. Can you guys see that on the, the Roll20? No. no. Nope. Unless it looks like a stick figure that looks exactly like the map you drew. Hang on. Let me put it in all your journals. Save changes. There. Now do you see it? Uh oh. Yep. Yep. And you can click on it to zoom in. It's almost like you knew we were going to come here. Oh, I, I actually thought there was a chance you guys would go, okay, screw this, let's go home. <laughs> <laughs> oh, there's a typo, good. Of course, right away. Yeah. Is it the uh, Watt? Yes, uh, it should be Way Watcher. Wa oh, Way Watcher. I like Watt Watcher. Maybe he was like a Weight Maybe he was a Weight Watcher. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, Sergeant Benedict, you, that's way. three points for that. <laughs> <laughs> you have to have your three daily servings of pus. Ah, the last line is the only important one. <laughs> <laughs> so my takeaway is that there is treasure, treasure here. Treasure. <laughs> uh, blah, 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 treasure? <laughs> <laughs> I should have written the treasure in red. <laughs> I, I have a question. Um, sure. Would I know what the Chalice of Cane Vow is? Uh, why don't you make a priestly lore roll? That will be intelligence plus your, your priesthood. All right. You know, if he didn't write, my ink runs dry, he could have finished his sentence. You I know. Know. <laughs> Was or maybe if he didn't do dot, 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 we could have at least got the cost. Yes. Oh, this is probably covering it. Yep. And, you know, he could have used his blood. <laughs> um... That is a notable relic of uh, 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 supposedly of the surgeon penitent, um, a necromantic vessel that was purified by uh, the surgeon penitent's touch, um, and is one of those things that was was reclaimed. And you remember it because it has sort of echoes to your own situation. Um, and it is it is a a, a wondrous item uh, of the surgeon penitent. So let me guess. You think it's important we go get it? Um, I think it's important that I go get it. I leave, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. I get it. Okay, okay, okay. You've done that line a million times. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Okay, I get it. Couldn't you ever want to go, you know, I don't know, gambling and whoring a little bit or something? Come on, you know, that, that'd be that'd be kind of something I could be in with. Oh, if only you had known me in my last life. <laughs> well, uh, so the I'm... potions <laughs> yeah. are four potions of fortification. Potions of fortification, as a quick action, you can quaff them, and for the duration of a fight or scene, they give you plus one to all your saves. There are four of those.
All right, so you guys have have checked out the room, gone in here, found the 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 body here, seen the notes, uh, looking back at the ruins of the castle. It does look like maybe the storm that he mentioned being called up, the eldritch magic, probably is what brought the the major part of the castle down. Mm -hmm. um, you spotted the, the the ways in. You've got the walls. What's your what's your next approach? What kind of recon? What kind of searching? Or what kind of heading in do you want to do? Before we do that, okay, oh, there's yeah, four please. potions. There's there's five of us. So I mean, who how, how who'd be the odd man out? Just tactically speaking. Oh me! I I have my own plus one save spell. Should I need it? It's self only though. Well, I mean, then it'll be plus two. I mean, I'm just saying who's who's going to benefit the most and who's going to, you know. I mean, I got a lot of hit points. So. Well, last time a lot of saves people were making saves. Though. I'm sorry. Saves are mostly against conditions and things. Remember, we had that ongoing damage and oh, confusion yeah, yeah, effects and things. Yes, yeah, so I think you know. First, Carl and Scott being like the front line guys. I need them the most. Um, we we want you because we don't we we need you to help us out if with heals. And and certainly the archer can pump out damage and keep on pumping out damage. Okay, okay, that's fine. If you guys want to do it, that one. Okay. Ben, are you back? Okay, we'll we'll press on anyway. Okay, Ben goes forward. But <laughs> or, or I just get his potion. Okay. Um, so what do you guys want to do? Um, you've got, um. essentially, let me kind of mark out uh, areas here. I'll kind of freehand here in, let's say, pink. So we've got one, two, three, and then the walls are four. What do you want to do? Let's see here. Well, we know that the ghouls were going in and out at where all you have, where you have all those X's, right? Yes. So we'd essentially be kind of going down into undead lairs. Hmm. Let me. Let me see here. Yeah. Scott, what do you want to do? Uh, I guess probably. Uh, scatter on the courtyard around the entrances to one, two, three, and sure. Which and which entrance do you want to check out first? Which one is the guard? Are the the one that we're in now? You guys are in. Uh, hang on a second. You're in this guard tower here. How how wide? Uh, go ahead. I'm sorry. And this Since is not three the scale. is the closest. I'll check out. I'll check out three for okay. For traps and sure, and uh, make that roll plus wisdom. Can... Coach Chanel, is that um, rope you go that you used? Can that be um, used? I mean, is, does it have any strength to it, or is it just like a slowly? Um, I mean, is it something that could possibly be used in combat to trip people? Uh, it could if I sent it uh, across and tied it to a, a separate thing and held on to it. It would it, require creating, you know, essentially tension, just like a regular rope. Okay, so it doesn't be, like just uh, doesn't straighten like a rod, though. But does it move? Does it move quickly, or does it move kind of slowly? So like take it, you know, so we'd have to set it up beforehand, or it's a cantrip. So I'm expecting that it doesn't move any faster than, for instance, me running across right. the. Okay, that's fine. Yeah, that's, thing that's, doing that's, it. that's what I was figuring. Scott, I so mean, it's not slow, but it's not super fast. Scott, so it looks like uh, the the wreckage here uh, in number three is one of the sort of secondary buildings of the castle that has collapsed. Um, you'll kind of poke around and uh, carefully take a check, and it looks like there's uh, some foundational cracks and fissures and it looks like there's a narrow crevasse there a narrow passage that the ghouls come out of here it doesn't look particularly well traveled but it's one of those things essentially it's a it's a crawl tunnel that must go down into the dungeons or the basement or something um, you could 
uh, it's like one person could could start clambering down in about a a three foot wide uh, tunnel. So you'd be at a significant disadvantage. Yes. Okay. It sounds how, like the now, I, I, I tactically, I think. Am I, I'm, I'm sorry. Uh, Scott, why don't you ask your question? How hard would it be to collapse this tunnel or, or block this tunnel? Blocking so, it would not be as hard as collapsing it. Do you want to go ahead and block this tunnel up? Well, let me ask. You. Well, hold on. Let's just see what's going. On. Um, before we go any farther, okay. H how big is this square, approximately? It's, hundred by hundred, two hundred uh, yeah, by. Yeah, I mean, it's it is a big castle courtyard, the building, that kind of thing. I mean, let's. Um, I mean, it, it's a big building courtyard, and uh, there's a great, great pile of rubble. So, say 120, 150. Sure. Uh, and, and certainly okay. not straight lines on any of this stuff. Um, okay, so and this guardhouse here, how wide is the is the open uh, gateway? The open gateway, let's say twenty three feet. Okay, so I'm just trying to figure out how defensible that would be with one person, one or two people, and that sounds not very versus a whole bunch of guys. You'd, so you'd certainly need to get other barriers or things to make that yeah, defensible. Right, right, right. Okay. Um, Sherry, what do you want to do? Well, um, if we want to block some of these to keep anything from coming up that way or something, I have a number of ways that I can do that, particularly if there's sort of, uh, um, I should, I can do hold portal, but that's a utility spell and doesn't last for that long. But what I can do is I can warp metal and uh, uh, things like that. So, and I can brittle things so that they do break. So I could collapse tunnels and stuff like that. Um, so I'll just kind of take a look and see if there's anything that I can do that would assist with, with how should we say, keeping things from getting on our tail. Is there any metal around here? Not very much at all. Oh. Anything here that's, Actually, that's is rusted. Really? Um, but if we're talking about the passage to three, um, there's... Well, rusted would be fine. Rusted would yeah. be fine. If there was a large quantity of rust metal, that wouldn't make any difference. No, but, it's, but not, not much stuff here is going to be made out of metal. You right. mean that it's become right, right. rust? It's become rust, but I'm also saying not much stuff here is going to be made out of metal. It's going to be mostly stone and wood, that kind of construction. Right. Okay. Um, right. Maybe some bandings on doors, that kind of thing. Um, All right. Uh, in terms of blocking up that passageway to three, um, mm -hmm. there is enough wreckage and stone and things like that. If you guys were to t take a little bit, uh, strength checks with bonuses from your skills, you think you wouldn't have that hard a time blocking it up to make it difficult. Um, certainly, if you could jam it up, maybe not permanently, but certainly not that somebody could just push through immediately. Okay. All right. Is, is one something similar to three? Uh, Scott, if you go over and check that out, it looks very similar over there. Another building, another set of, of cracks and uh, crawlways. And, and, and four is just the walls? I, I use four to mark the walls there to say the because you guys haven't haven't walked the circumference or anything. Okay. Matt, what do you want to do? Um, well, we've got one more opening uh, to worry about, I guess. Can I use ritual magic to, uh, I guess, put like you know some kind of ward on it that would uh, help think... mitigate uh, ghouls rushing out? On uh, one or three? Mm -hmm. Yeah, sure. See, uh, you could do that to one of those. All right. So, uh, the car, oh, yeah, um, I oh, yeah, asked it to one. Okay. Well, uh, hold on. is your ward going to go like the first ghoul? It's going to wipe him out, and then the next one, next hundred are coming through? He's probably going to echo something of the warding that he saw up in the guard tower. Does that seem reasonable, Matt? Oh, yeah. Okay. That is yeah, re re repulsing. It might not last as long as his. Since some of that is powered by his own death, but uh, uh, you could certainly do that. Um, what's the appropriate uh, uh, thing you want to roll for that? Let's say. Um, uh, from my background, I guess like a hospital or okay, is like my kind of you know cleric skill. So then let's have you roll that plus your wisdom plus level. All right, so that's five. All right, that's a good one. All right, yeah. So I'm going to kind of say that draw a little warding there on that entryway, okay? 
So mm -hmm. that, that down there is blocked up. Uh, ben, what do you want to do? Okay, Ben's not back. Carl, what do you want to do? Um, I'm going to go walk the wall. Uh, well, shit. Uh, yeah, I'm going to go walk the wall. Um, just take a look uh, at around and see what's going on. Okay, why don't you make a wisdom uh, check? Oh, uh, there's nothing. There's nothing. There. Uh, you gonna... you can add your... your uh, well, tell me what your backgrounds are again. Uh, pirate and um, uh, animal husbandry and uh, merchant kind of. Make and that? assaulting fortresses. What? What? what assaulting your, sea what, fortresses. What's your pirate? What's your animal handling? What's your uh, merchant? Uh, uh, pilot. Uh, pirate is three. Animal handling is three. Merchant is two. Okay. Uh, uh, why don't you roll and, and add your wisdom bonus plus level plus three? Thirteen. Okay. And for the other side, roll. Ooh. Much more observant there. Okay, so let's see. So you missed what's over there on that side. All right. Uh, I hate you. <laughs> so go back Carl, and look, Carl. You're kind of the. You notice on this side, on the side that I kind of put the four on, um, mm -hmm. the wall comes up, and there are cliffs that kind of go down mm -hmm. uh, on that side. Uh, there's a little inlet over there, and mm -hmm. the cliffs, and you're kind of looking down. And you will notice below the sort of the ground line, let's say that the, it's the, the walls are what, 20, 25 feet tall? Okay. And then you hit the ground, and then the cliff goes down a ways. You will notice uh, groups of birds kind of coming in and landing clearly on the cliff face. Oh, like there's a hole there. Okay. Like there's a cave or a hole or something right, there. Right, 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 right. Okay. And so that's about, uh, what, so 25, 40, 50, 50 I'm feet away? I'm guessing maybe 50 feet down. Okay. Now, um, could we get closer to it if we went outside the castle, or is this the best way to approach it? Uh, yeah, you'd have to go. Uh, actually, the best way is probably going to be going down this wall and then you'd have to, to kind of look over the cliff edge to, to get an assessment of it. Okay. Did you wish to okay, do I that? Will, I will, no, I will tell them about that. That's okay. What's going on. Ooh, that sounds super interesting. I'll rope you down. Okay, you guys want to um, take a look and, and go that way or, or and see if we can go there? Sure. I mean, they didn't look like ghoul birds, right? <laughs> we'll get the eagle. Get, oh. They're sea ghouls. Seagulls. Oh, <laughs> oh lol. Sorry. <laughs> yeah. Or Jonathan Livington Seagull. Oh. <laughs> um, it's fine with me, but again, this might be something that we want uh, the, the stealthy guy to do. So, I mean, it's up to you. Scott, do you want them to lower you down by rope so you can check out this sea cave? Sure. That sounds like a good idea. Okay. Uh, sounds like better than going through undead land. Um, well, this uh, is. Fine. But I'll how be far, stealth, how, I will be stealthy and just just to tell you guys, just to cl clarify, you guys haven't really checked out the number two area, but just to, right. to remind you. Okay, uh, so yeah, let's have you make a stealth roll, Scott. Like the wind, yes, the wind. Uh, plus level, plus skill, plus yeah. Ooh, crappy roll, but still 16. All right, uh, so you will actually probably get down there, lower down, but you will scare off, and there'll be that big scattering of birds with a great sort of caw mass, and you guys will see that as they, they a good couple dozen birds light out. But you will see that they're a little louder than that, but uh, you will see that there is actually a cut entrance. This is clearly part of the castle. It looks like maybe at one time it might have been a back escape route, like they might use this to lower down uh, ropes down to the, the, the um, inlet below, or maybe hung people here, something like that. 
but it's definitely a solid and secure passage that goes into the underground of the castle. Awesome. How far, um, how far down from him is the water? Uh, so the, um, it's about 20 feet plus down to the uh, um, entryway, and then maybe another 50, 60 feet down to the inlet. Oh, okay. So, yeah, so pretty far. So we couldn't drop the boat out here and drop it, jump out. Okay. No, not really. So we'll kind of. Okay. So from the here. from the cliff face, the cave, leaping down, is it is it deep water below that one could jump into, or is it deadly crashing rock death? Why don't you make a roll? <laughs> Let me see here. You can't tell from here. It, sure the, there's no obvious like rocky outcroppings that say to you I would die and get impaled there but at the same time you can't judge the depth from this distance hmm what do you guys want to do uh, let's see here it, give me a sense of how, like essentially the the castle part of it is pretty much ruins but there's some doorway parts still there or we, ways we already, in we already like, looked at the, um, the, the we did at the two no. the two gateway the nope. tower isn't no so here, let me describe there if you want to go check out area two okay imagine that that's the main building of the castle mm -hmm. and the interior and a good maybe two thirds of the walls have collapsed in there Okay. You've judged that just based on, on where and marks and tracks that the, the uh, ghouls kind of clamber over that. So clearly there are some passages out of that rubble uh, that they, they use to come up. You would guess probably leading to the, the basement or the dungeons of the, uh, of the castle itself. The tower is kind of... Uh, just barely holding on. Okay. Uh, uh, you know, a bit of the lower section is uh, uh, broken out, uh, but it is it is still a, a, a standing stone tower. Okay. So, let's see here then. Okay. Why don't you make a, a, qu a quick uh, wisdom roll? What's your, your sort of dungeoneering skill, adventuring skill? Uh, oh, I have a traveling skill? And I have a lore skill. Okay, let's 20. use Traveler here. Okay. Hold on a second. Sorry, the letter got in the way of stuff. Okay, oh, so I got... Um, so, one, two for Traveler. Two, three... Four, um, seven for my Wisdom. Okay. Um, God, why can't I roll decently? Uh, <laughs> the 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 smaller of the two X's looks like another sort of crawl crawl space kind of entryway. The bigger uh -huh. two looks like a, a wider gap, like okay, like, like you it's might... been pushed away and like that might be you could clamber down uh, standing uh, down to probably some stairs down below. Okay. That's what you All got right. from that. All right, then I'll back away and just uh, come back and say and tell them what I've seen. Because it'll be awesome. Yeah, and I'm going to assume, by the way, to, for purposes of this, that, that for the moment Scott has dis with his critical success has disarmed all of the noise making traps around here. Awesome. Yeah. Does that seem reasonable? Yeah. Yes. Okay. Uh, so we're back to Matt, uh, Carl. What do you guys want to do now? Um. Okay. Are we? So we're going to go to the side view. What do you want to do? It seems the least ghouly right now. Okay, is it possible that, I mean, they could be all be sleeping hanging out and just dealing with this or whatever or being inert, um, or they could be hanging around there just mulling around waiting for something to happen. If they're mulling around, it would be nice if we had a distraction to the far side of the island and then we went in and did whatever we needed to do. But we could also that, we could also, we're also talking about alerting them and waking them all up. Right. Hmm. Which I mean, my be? guess is if they're Sorry? Which will it be? 
What do we know about ghouls? Are they nocturnal only? Uh, you guys, lore checks haven't given you the specific detail enough to say that. You're, you're, I will say that you are leaning towards thinking that they are predominantly nocturnal. Oh, because they okay. attacked at night. Yes. In the middle of the night. It was very unkind of them. They have third shift. <laughs> Sucks, man. They must be way down on the totem pole. Yeah, it would yeah but they're, they're getting time and a half gold. For <laughs> <Yes>. it, <though. laughs> no, it would it's be the possible. only thing that makes their minimum wage living wage. <laughs> it would be possible to have on one person wage. on the boat <laughs> distracting them all running out in the harbor and distracting them all as long as there's not any seagull gowls, ghouls, whatever the hell they are. And then um, the rest of us go in and get what we need. But we don't know where we're going, right? Yeah, that's true. No, that's true. I mean... And then so, because we don't know where we're going, we don't know which of us we can afford to have out in the boat making well, noise it has, it trying has to, to be, draw it has ghouls. To be, it has to be the one of the sea people. So either me or... Um, or uh, the warrior you, or the guy who does traps? So, yeah. so right, let exactly. me ask you, are you trying to get out of going into no, the castle? No, I'm trying, to, I'm trying to end up being alive and not fighting the biggest, huge four fam ghouls. We're, we're, we can go to the side. We want to. We can just we can go so stealthily and see how that goes. I mean, you know, if, if it's narrow caverns down there, I'm going to be able to block a narrow cavern. Excellent. Then we definitely want you there. So, I'm I'm thinking that once we get down to the castle proper, it's not going to be all that narrow. Okay. Well, um, let's. Uh, you want to go to the side? I, I do. Side. We block one. We block three. Do we want to block the small one and two, or what do we want to do? Well. I don't think we the thing is, is we were blocking one and three because we thought we would be going yeah. down two, yeah. right? Well, that's fine. I think that's fine. I just want to make sure we know what we do. That's fine. Let's leave two open. That's fine. Okay, so we're going to go down are four. Are you going to block three then, is what you're telling me? No, one and three are already blocked. No, already no, only that. one is oh, blocked. One is. Oh, it is. Okay. Because nobody Gosh. said that they but were making rolls for blocking three. And one is blocked versus undead only, so we can go through it. Right. And How long will it take you to do a ritual and block three and um, two? How long does that take? Because I don't want to go down there at night. Uh, so it took him about an hour to do the first one. What well, time? From, from, from the rules for ritual magic, though, it says that I guess to prevent you from being cheesy, the it gets less effective every time you try to do the same effect. Okay. Okay. No, that's fine. Um, so okay. So what time is it right now? So let's say it's about one one in the afternoon by this point. Okay. It's it's getting late. We could block three if we wanted to. Well, let's not. Let's let's get them for. Let's have them so we can escape. We can okay. go through one, and we can escape through three and two. So that's fine. Let's just leave those open. Okay. Fair enough. Okay. All right. So let's go down. Let's go down to four. I can be at the top, and I can lower people down. Okay. Carl, why don't you make a strength roll? Just don't roll a one. And if you don't roll a one, then everything will go fine with this operation. Awesome. I. Proud to be part of this plan. Okay. Was there a plane involved? So, uh, Kathak, Rook, uh, Cochinel, uh, Tommaso, Black Dog, you guys will find yourselves lowered down onto this, this cliff, kind of swing a little bit in and land here. It's a little bit. I'm getting some echo there. Hello? Hey, sorry, guys. That's okay. That's okay. An important call came in, so. <laughs> okay. We're getting a little echo from you. But, uh, uh, so, uh, it's a little precarious here because cause it has been worn away a little bit by time. Um, but there is a, a passageway going inward. Um, so, I'm assuming we're keeping the same marching order. Black Dog and Rook at the front. Uh, Tommaso in the middle, Cochinelle and Kathak at the back? Yes. Okay. So, uh, uh, Black, uh, Rook, why don't you make a roll for me here? What am I rolling? Uh, this has to be your sort of do traps, pick locks thing. Is this 
Wisdom fighting or actually uh, dexterity? Twenty one. All right. Nice. Uh, there is a pretty secure lock on the door that leads out here. You go in in this this corridor, maybe twenty thirty feet. Um, lots of guano here. Birds have settled in this place. Lots of nesting material and things like that. Um, but you're pretty certain that the ghouls have never used this door. That it's been been secure, um, yeah, but and it will take you a little bit to kind of uh, de-rust it and get the lock open and uh, open it up um, and oil the hinges so that there's none of the, the 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 creaking that would give you away, and you will walk in and kind of come to what must have been maybe a set of sort of uh, secret bat passage patches passages. Um, mm -hmm. One of the set of stairs. Uh, that you come past goes up and clearly goes into the castle, but you can see stone and collapse there, like it might have been a way that the that the rulers came down to this place. But the other passage that goes off, you will come out into what's clearly uh, the sort of the dungeons. Uh, you will see sets of cells and things here, um, and it looks like uh, the it goes off in sort of two directions from here. Uh, what do you want to do with the, the cells and stuff? Um, that door that door was metal. That door was primarily uh, uh, heavy old wood banded with metal. That's what kept okay, it well, intact. Well, of course, no, there's your metal if you got an idea. Oh, I can warp it so we couldn't well, open it back up again. No, I'm just I'm saying if we want something to do something creative then maybe that well, that'll help us out oh okay I, I don't know what to do I don't well, know I can I hold the portal if they if the ghouls come down after us no oh, okay yeah yeah good okay so but we'll just close the door in the meantime and maybe relock it do you can wish do is that? that what you can do I don't think we well, need to relock that it. Would, just, that would just that would be we couldn't exit fast correct oh correct okay. we could just we could just close it and leave it uh, with a cat. Yes, we could just close it. Okay. We'll assume that you, you'll go back down the corridor, close that door, shut it, make sure it's secure. Um, so you've got the cells, and you've got two major directions going off from here. What do you want to do? Cursory check of the cells, I guess. Okay, so let's. Uh, we're going to start with your action, then, Koshinel, why don't you make a wisdom check for me? Okay. Traveler. So, with Traveler? Yep. All right. Oh my god, I rolled over a 7. I got a 21. It looks like uh, most of the cells are are empty. And that, that sense of, uh, I mean, no, no bodies in those, things like that. Um, except for one. Um, okay. And you will see that there is a body uh, huddled in the corner of this uh, last cell and unlike the other cells where the the metal has just kind of sat there and kind of rusted um, the bars on this one are are scraped and ghoul marked and it takes you a second to realize that someone must have been fleeing from the ghouls and shut themselves in this cell well that's horrible and the ghouls just kind of scraped and screamed and waited outside and, but it is a dead body, but not a ghouled body. Does not look like a ghouled body, no. <sighs> Man, I hope it's, his soul made it out. This you is dark. Can we see who he was? Like, why he would have still been here? Uh, you'd have to uh, pick the lock on the cell. That's not my skill. I can only do it by making a lot of noise. Um, it might have been one of the surgeon penitents. Does it look like last ten years? Yeah, it definitely looks last ten years. Okay, then I'll go back and say one of the surgeon penitent fellows maybe uh, is was hiding back in the cell there. He isn't uh, ghouled, but he is gone. Well, I think do it's, you need uh, to do something. We should. We should. Um check the body uh, if nothing else 
It needs to be given uh, its funerary rites. I will pick the lock then. Okay. Quick, Check quick, for traps. quick funer- funerary rites. Scott, just make a roll. Just don't roll a one. Uh, so not too bad. Even with the rust on these these old uh, 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 cell locks, you're able to, to pop that and open it up. You guys will check out the body, um, and mm-hmm. it does look like maybe an acolyte or assistant uh, who panicked and, and fled back here. Um, most of the goods that he has on him are, uh, uh, di- you know, w- damaged and... Um, uh, uh, worn, essentially the leather has come apart, the strings, the cloth is stringy. Matt, you'll be able to perform a qu- the, the quick blessing and give him the mark of the surgeon to make sure his spirit has properly left him, I assume? Yep, if everybody remembers episode one, uh, that is delivered by hawking a loogie into the hand <laughs> and anointing the forehead, eyes, and mouth. Before oh, we don't even the symbol of the surgeon on his forehead. Please let me survive this. <laughs> <laughs> he pulls his hand away. The, the, the skull is now covered with a kind of a, a, a viscous green yellow slime. Um, you, you'll notice I'm much more productive than in episode one. <laughs> As I progress through levels, my oozes get more interesting. <laughs> No, you you humans are so grossed out by stuff. It's ridiculous. Scott, as he's doing that, you will note that this person has a lovely ring on their finger. Really? Yes. It's such a lovely ring. Do you point it out? Like... Yes. Okay. It appears to be a magical ring. Ooh, the best kind of ring. Of ghoul attraction. <laughs> is, it, is, is that uh, some kind ring, of ceremonial ring, ceremonial ring, ring, ring there, Tommaso? No, I'll take a look at it. it and, uh, no, definitely not. Looks like just a kind of a, a, a an enchanted ring. Ooh. Shall I tell you what the ring does? Sure. Because there's no rules for really delving and things like that, and that's a good thing. So uh, you will check it out. Uh, uh, our our resident wizard will look at it. Um, do a try quick, to talk to it. End up with a splitting headache. Quick quick okay, divination on. on it. Um, it is a ring of enmity. Oh, awesome! And what that does that is it gives you a plus two save versus confusion. Okay. And. If you are ever confused while you're wearing yes. this, you get to pick which of your friends you attack. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I need to. You can even, though, attack yourself if you want. That would have come in real handy a couple games ago. <laughs> <laughs> I, I love these magic things that are response to what happened <laughs> three sessions before. Thanks, lol. Uh, so Matt does the ritual. Sherry checks that out. Uh, uh, Scott has picked the lock on the door. Uh, what are you doing, Carl? Uh, I am standing guard looking at the, um, um, in the dark recesses of where we're probably going to go and seeing if there's any ghouly ghoulies out there very quietly. Sure. And I have with my, and generally, um, if I have room, I'll be having my axe. I assume I really don't have a, um, room for a two-handed, uh, Sword in well, general, you do right? in this area, but as you go through the corridors, probably not. Okay, so I'll either have my axe out, and if there's not enough room for that, then I'll have a uh, like a, a javelin out. Okay, Carl, why don't you make a straight wisdom roll for me? Hmm. Plus level. Okay. Woo-hoo! So, Carl, I I know smart stuff. I, I'm good at this. So there's a set of uh, doors. There's one way out of here that is clearly the path that the ghouls take. That that's oh, the God. way that the ghouls come. That that's that's the direction that they they move through as they head up, uh, you know, and head out to. Uh, you'll see the other ways where there are cracks and things like that. So that that is their their major movement point there. Uh, there's no real door, so there's no real way to to, to seal that particularly easily. The other way that comes off from here um, goes out into another room 
Uh, and it looks relatively like the ghouls haven't come through here. Uh, but you'll kind of realize that this room has a well in it. Okay. Uh, when they get finished screwing around with the dead body, I'll tell them about what the, the well and, and where the ghouls go and everything. Julio. Ben, are you doing anything I should know about? Um, so, uh, I guess I'm going to help uh, Carl stand guard. <laughs> okay. We'll assume that you're backing him up on that. That seems fair. Uh, so you have uh, anointed the body, sent him on to his his, his final rewards. Uh, you've checked out directions. You've got the magic ring. Who is carrying the magic ring? Well, I have it right now, but I can't carry it. Pers- I can't like wear it or use it. Okay. I think is, I have is it. anyone not maxed out on magic? I items? I am not. I think. And I actually, it would be awesome have to have it in your hands. Yeah, yeah. It's actually that makes a lot of sense. <laughs> we don't want him going ape shit. You don't want him confused, and if he is, you want him to choose tactically who he's gacking. Who he's going to one hit? So we'll hand that off to you. Okay, Carl. So you have the ring of enmity. That's plus it's two. also very sparkly. Plus two versus just confusion, or what? Plus two oh, on yeah. your saves yeah. versus confusion. So you'll still be confused for a round. But you just can two. choose who you attack. Yeah. Mm. And you can choose to attack yourself. The best thing is it's very cut to me too. Yes. <laughs> uh. So what do you guys want to do? Uh, check out this well. Okay. What's going on there? Uh, it goes down a ways. You can hear, probably actually hear the sort of lapping of water down a ways. Does it look like it goes all the way down to sea level, or does it smell like fresh water? Uh, actually smells like seawater. Wow. Okay. Um, let's see here. Can is there, I? Is there a, is actually like well accoutrement? Is it like a bucket, and a winch, and all that stuff, or is it just yes. a hole? Yes, it does have the the, the standard. Well, at, well, there's there's what's left of it. It looks like that sort of wooden rack and stuff has collapsed. Uh, so if I uh, cast a flare or essentially like a little light spell on a pebble and drop it down. Uh, do we see anything on the way down? Why doesn't... Who who wants to make that wisdom check? Uh, Sounds like someone good at perception. I have uh, wisdom of seven with my level. I'm added pretty in. sure that's what it is. <laughs> oh. You were Matt. Okay. Yeah, I've got uh, 18 wisdom. Yeah, you might be better than me. Let's see, I have... I have 18 wisdom too, so we're the same. Okay. So right. our modifiers are seven. Well, so, if everything okay. I Modifier know should. wrong about statistics tells me anything, you're you due. You should go. Yes. No, you're, no. you're due. <laughs> so, yeah, uh, Sherry, make that know. roll. I'll give you a plus two circumstance bonus for the group looking. Okay. Uh, see? Better. <laughs> Way to go. Almost, almost. almost. Yeah. Um... You will see as it goes down that it does look like there are maybe some, uh, how do I put this, uh, circular things. Like maybe there was some kind of uh, water pumping system because you can see some some holes for that uh, huh? here in the, the, the sub thing. But you'll also see a larger sort of partially submerged archway, like a doorway down there. Oh. Oh, we've got the water rings too. We got two water rings. Right, and I have water breathing as a t- as a cantrip. Well, isn't um, isn't the and water ring the water ring allows you to you? do an ally? So between us, we have enough for all of us to be water breathing if we want to. Uh, that does four, and we've got five. But I've got a cantrip. I know, you said one ally, and so that would be four of us. That would be two rings, and then you and someone else. And so somebody would be left out. Wait, no, no, no. Your rings allow you to do an ally. No, they don't. Oh, no. I thought they did. Oh, okay. Oh, let me check my cantrip and see if I can cast it on someone else. 
And when I say Sorry. partially submerged, I mean partially submerged is in maybe a foot or two deep. Oh, okay. Well, that shouldn't be a problem unless the tide comes in. Yes. When does the tide come in? Uh, tide comes in at midnight and noon. Okay. okay. So it's past? So, and it, yeah, yeah, it's past one o'clock. So. Yeah. You want to explore the bottom of the well? Is that what we're saying? Why not? It might take us right to the vault. At least it doesn't go right to the ghoul. So far. Uh, now, how far down in the well is it? Uh, maybe about 40 feet. You make it sound like finding the ghouls would be a bad thing. 40 feet? Yeah. <laughs> well, your your relic is much more important. You have to you know, you know, have to get that safe. You can always send somebody back to get the ghoul. Right? Yeah. yeah. Get the relic first. Most important. That's the most important. So, the most important so thing here... the relic with the blood of the ghouls. I think, <laughs> <laughs> I think the most important thing here is you guys want to try to be quiet, right? Yes. Okay. In that case... Uh, what is everyone's dexterity bonus? Um, mine the bagel. Plus three, I believe. Okay. Plus four. Okay. So Matt's probably the loudest person. Um, that has never been said before. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, Scott, why don't you make a skill roll with your sort of uh, thief to uh, give Matt a circumstance bonus. How's that sound? Here's my sneaky. All right, so Matt, Woo -woo, I'll, I'll actually three. give you a a plus four on your stealth check. All nice. right. Nice. Woo. -hoo. Okay. So he's louder than you would like him to be in the the going down and the splashing and so on. But you guys will get about forty feet down, ropes lower down, and you will come into. It almost looks like a maintenance hallway of some kind. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, and your judgment here is that uh, that there must have been some kind of pumping system for fresh water that has stopped or something like that. Um, oh, I wonder what it's blocked by. Dun, dun, dun. Um, <laughs> and, and it does look like this must be part of a more sophisticated vault sort of security system. Um, oh, well, that's good. Uh, you guys will f make your way along. Uh, it's uh, one man passing through here, essentially, uh, one at a time. So I assume Black Dog, Rook, uh, uh, of you two, who's first? Do uh, What do you want? Do you want me to go first or you? I mean, I'm not going to be able to... You can, you can fade in the shadows and get behind me. But you can also I, just I mean, see security things. I should look. Yeah, I should go first to look for traps. Okay. Yeah, that's what I'm. Just in mean. case if this is that's a vault I mean. or something down here. Make a quick uh, roll for me, Scott. And I'm gonna help because so I can see in the dark. So you claim it's pretty dark down here, though. And I'm I'm graceful. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you have perfect what am I, balance. What am I? Uh, How long did wisdom. Your last? Wisdom. Oh. We can plus thief. Twenty-two. So you will move forward, Scott. Um, eventually, you will come out to just kind of stop yourself because there's some bones piled here, like Ew. this side thing had been used to throw old bones and things like that. Split open leg bones, hip bones, things like that. The marrow sucked out of them. You can see the teeth and gnaw marks on them. And you'll come out into a wider room. Uh, it's actually quite big. Um, and it actually has sort of uh, canals in it, like sewer and water passages and stuff. Um, uh, there are a couple of doorways, two or three doorways off from here. Um, uh, the water looks like it must be seawater and stuff now. Um, you guess that it might not have been uh, before. And judging by sort of the layout of the room, you guess that maybe one way might go off sort of more to the sort of the waterworks. Another way might go back to more passages to eventually get up to the dungeons. And another way must go off more towards the vault direction. So this, is, uh, this, this waterworks... I mean, would this have supported the castle? Is that what it was? You guess, with your thief role there, that it's partially 
uh, old, probably uh, 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 arcane engineering for pumping water up to the stores and the cisterns of the castle, but also might have been used for uh, sealing off the, the vaults and things like that, perhaps. Like flooding them, or...? Possibly. Oh, I mean, what do you guys think? Should well, we go to the waterworks first, or right to the vault? Well, I think we should go to the vault, but the other thing is, is that who has got these rings? I do. Scott you has do one. one. Who else? And, and Matt has the other. other. That's what I thought, Matt. Was, uh, okay, just so we know. No, somebody else ha went up with that. Um, I well, definitely don't have one of the rings now. Well, if you've got plate mail on, you might want to have it. Yeah, but I'm uh, I'm already at four magic items. Then get rid of something. <laughs> uh, everything's pretty good, though. I don't know. <laughs> good. Well, you tell me when you're drowning. Oh. Put my faith in the gods. All right. Uh, so assume, assume same marching order? Yeah. Okay. okay. Well, then who has the other one, then? Um, I thought Fabian did. But well, Fabian yeah, except he gave it. He gave it up, and we... Um, Either. Yeah, I I could almost swear that we we gave it to Matt, but that might have been because uh, he wasn't I, there at the mo at the time. So uh, I uh, I got his sword. Oh, okay. All right. Well, uh, so who who you guys decide who has it? Um, I could drop one of those dragon stone um stones. Well, no, we can't. Those we can't. You'd have to leave it. That'd be bad. Okay, I've got a helmet. Um. I could take that off and put that somewhere else. Um, probably. Mm. You know where you can put it. Yeah. Oh, yeah. That's what it is. Um, I could take the helmet off, put that away, and, and put that ring on. Mm. Is it, anybody else? Anybody else? A question. Did all of you level up for a, an additional magic item? I, d I did not use that. You didn't use that for one of your level ups? Okay. Oh. I mean, in one is this one foot of water now, or is that what this is? So now you're probably not standing in, in water uh, at this point. Because um, you're coming out of sort of a side side corridor. I think it's probably a little bit up. Okay. Give me, you know what? Let, let's I'll say, carry let's, the ring. I will carry the ring. I will give it to whoever it is because I can just have a quirk. That's all. all that's what's going to happen. Is for a while, Actually, my that, quirks will true. drive I mean, me. You, you can give it to me. You can give it to me. That'll be fine. Because okay, you don't need to be running around. I may need to be running around. And you've got water breathing. Yes, I do. Okay, so I'll take it. I'll take a quirk. Okay, uh, we'll come back to that in a, a minute uh, and and work out what that is. Uh, okay. So you guys will move in, proceed forward um, into okay. this sort of sewer way uh, kind of thing. Um, and you guys are kind of out, sort of moving towards the, the middle of this thing, when you will hear noise and you will see uh, figures coming out of areas, clearly been kind of rushing this way to try and catch up with you guys. So I'm huh. going to actually put you on the map. Uh, it certainly doesn't look like all the ghouls or anything, but um, there, there are some guys coming after you and so in thinking back what was it that we did that set them off uh, it sounds like uh, Matt's thing called a, uh, a handful of them to you guys not the full group but some oh okay. you mean Matt's 14 yes okay all right okay so I'm gonna put the the Okay, so I'm about to show you guys the map. You guys ready? Yes. Okay. Run away! Uh, so, can everybody see the map now? Yep. Okay. Uh, there are two groups. There's a group that's kind of come out of a uh, uh, sort of hallway side thing up in front of you. That's this group over here. 
looks like five mooks plus a little bit larger ghoul uh, with kind of gauntlets that are chains wrapped around his hands. Uh, but behind you coming out uh, uh, of these uh, sort of back hallways are two uh, larger armored ghouls. Can you see those, the, right. the Gulark Centurions? Mm -hmm. Yep. Okay, I'm going to pull up the initiative thing. Why isn't everybody... I'm going to clear you guys out. Let me add you guys to the turn thing, and I'll have you roll your initiative. Sound reasonable? Sure. I see one iron uh, Gulark. There's only one yeah, iron the, Gulark, and there are two gotta, Gulark Centurions. you got to open up your screen further off to the oh. right... Okay. Oh, and okay. do those look like um, casters? Does everyone look like casters, or I mean, no, none of them look. Those like guys casters. all look like. Okay, so a hold spell is actually going to be useful then. Yeah. Uh, the centurions are armed with spears, so they can throw those. They have a ranged okay. attack. Do I have enough room to use my two-handed? Oh yes. So. Let me get everybody. Initiative in here, oh. so do, 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 they are. That is that. That's ten. Hey, before we start fighting, let me do a rule check here. I put one of my incremental advances into the hit points for level five. Is that okay? Yeah, it is absolutely correct. And that's it. Okay. Um, Rook, what was your initiative? Scott? I'm here. Hold on. Use the fancy thing. I'm trying to find the fancy thing. Cush, you know what was your initiative? Um, I always have to look it up to see what my initiative is to roll it. Okay. Um, Kathak, uh, I'm what was your initiative? Woo! Jeez. Okay. I'm always slow Sorry. on it for some reason. Uh, Kathak, what was your initiative roll? Oh, there it is. Ben? Sorry. Are you there? Ben? Twenty-three. Yeah. Twenty-three. Awesome. Okay. And Cochinel? Um, I'm sorry, hon. I turned my mouse has decided to not move. I'm okay, there we go. Sorry. Um so slash roll. Yeah, you can yeah. That is an initiative. It's a fifteen. Yep, there's an initiative button on your character sheet, and uh, the dice roller is also your friend. Okay, so let me sort that descending. Okay, and I'm going to... So any of the ones that are labeled just ghoul, those are mooks. Okay? Um, so these two figures that are armored um, will, will move over to close. And we'll kind of leap across. They will not be able to attack, though, with that movement. So this is um, the, how, how, de how deep is this water? Uh, maybe f uh, five or six feet deep. Okay, so it's definitely an impediment. Yeah. Um, Iron Gulark. Walk this water. Come rushing over to you, Carl. Carl, 25. This thing is bigger than the other ghouls that you saw. Has mm -hmm. chains wrapped around its hands. Great, uh, dripping okay, we'll fangs. Okay, just go. I'm mad. Okay, I'm mad. All right. Are you mad? Um, you mad, bro? I am mad. All right. 20. Need to hit a twenty. Uh, what is it? Uh, plus, uh, hoop to hoop to hoop to hoop to What the hell am I doing here? Oh, yeah, that's right. Eight. Um, two, 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 eight. Uh, okay, um, so it's a, a minus a seven, so it's a so no. So you'll miss. Okay, I will miss, and then I will use my building frenzy. So okay, that'll be a d10. All right. Uh, and building frenzy does what? It gives you an extra. It gives me an extra d10 whenever I hit. Okay, up to four d10. Kathak, you are unengaged, uh, and these ghouls of various types have come rushing over. Uh, Black Dog has been engaged. Cochinelle is being engaged. Tommaso is being engaged. What do you want to do? Uh, <clears throat> Can't hear you. Not very well. I'm going to declare as a free action uh, the, all the mook ghouls as my lethal hunter. Okay. 
and I'm going to shoot him. Okay. Uh, to hit the uh, superior ghoul mooks, you need to hit 19. All right, look at that right away, Whoa. out of the gate, critical. Ben, roll your damage, double damage. All right. Um, All right. So I roll it and then double it. Roll it and then double it. So 44, that will kill four of them. Nice. So you will see as this goes off, as they come rushing out, Ben will rapid fire, let loose, and uh, 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 four of those those ghoul mooks will just drop. Tommaso. All right. Um, I will, as a quick action, cast divine endurance and I'm going to use my uh, protection uh, circle or whatever you call them in this on that so uh, everybody gets 20 temporary hit points Ooh, nice oh, thank you alright so that's your quick action what's your standard action sir alright standard action will be uh, I am in, I'm in uh, like hand to hand with this uh, gulark here uh, yes you are all right, I will. Um, I'm gonna take a swipe at him with uh, my sword. Okay, this ghoul, Gulark Centurion, has an AC of twenty. Uh, where's the attack button? Uh, so you will miss, but you will do four points of miss damage. Oh, that's right. I guess I did do miss damage. Oh yes, uh, right on the iron. How much did you do then, Carl? It'd, it'd be four. It'd be four, four points. Okay, so you'll take the swing and miss on him, Matt. Um, uh, Cochinel. Okay, uh, for a quick action, I cast freeze. That uh, puts special effects on all my ice spells, and I'm going to hit this Gulak Centurion. That's uh, near me, but not quite right on top of me yet. Well, he's uh, he is engaged. Oh, he's engaged? Yeah. He just oh. couldn't attack. Oh. Oh, I didn't know you could do that. Yeah. Okay, so that's cool. Then what I will do is I'll use Shocking uh, Grasp as a quick attack to essentially, um, and this is just a, um, uh, how to say this? It's just a quick action to cast. Okay. And um, essentially, I hit him. It's If I hit him versus the PD, I'm going to pop free. And I do a little bit of damage to okay. him. Okay, PD is 19 on the Centurion. Okay. And I'm going to mark the Centurion. 23, I hit him. That. So I pop free. Um, I pop free and I do, let's see here, uh, 1D4. 1d4, okay. So, you know it's going to be a massive... Uh, you can just click on the roller. Right. Okay, so, okay, and I your... Just do a point. So you are not engaged. What's your standard Okay, so I can then? move. Yes. Right? Yes. So, I can move over here, okay. I assume? Yep. All uh, right. Uh, make a, a simple uh, dexterity check for me there to kind of jump the, the gap. <laughs> okay. Ah, oh, sp- I know exactly. Uh, Just don't roll a one. <laughs> I didn't. I rolled a two. Okay, you probably get I'm, over there and uh, you know. Uh, I get my shoes wet. Shoes and wet and pull noise. yourself up uh, from there. Um, it. Since it's just a five foot jump, if it would have been further, you would have been right in the water. Okay. <laughs> okay. Can I can I cast my actual spell? Yes. Okay. So um, essentially, I will hit him with. Uh, let's see, my at wills for this time. 
Uh, I'll probably just hit him with Ray of Frost then. Okay. Uh, is that PD or MD? That's PD. PD so is the 19. same thing, right? Is 19 again? 19. Uh, so I did good. I hit him with a 20. All right, roll your damage. So, okay, so that one is... Um, roll... Uh, 68. 26. 26 points of damage. You will frost into him. Is there anything, uh, is there a secondary effect on that? Not yet, because you made me cast Shocking Grasp Oh, first. yes, that's great. Because um, I can only do one quick action per right. turn, right? Yep. Uh, the ghoul will move over and will strike at you, Carl, since you are the closest target there. What is your AC, Carl? Uh, 21, I believe. Yes, 21. Uh, it will run up and it will m miss. Rook. Uh, I disappeared to the office of the shadows. Okay, uh, highest MD is 17 here, sir. Put the ninja symbol on you to show you're in the shadows. You using the die roller? Oh, yeah, yes. you're perfect, sir. All right. Um, hey, Rich. Sander, yeah. can't access um, our my guy, Black Dog, and put up his his hit points or anything like that. Oh, you can't access the... Or, mo or move him. Okay, hang on a second. Let me make sure I got that. Black Dog, uh, edit. Uh, it says you should be able to control him. Okay. There's only select the guy. I keep seeing like a uh, arrow. Oh, like, I know what uh, it is. I was having. I had. Oh, right, forget right, it. Right. Forget it. Okay. I had the. All uh, right. That's so I, had, I had the measurement. Show. Yeah, okay. I know. I've done that before. Uh, so the uh, Gulark Centurion, um, Tommaso, the Gulark Centurion on you will swing with his uh, claw there at you. All right. AC twenty three. He will hit. Uh, that's an even roll, so he doesn't do ongoing. 21 points of damage. Ouch. All right. oh, the other Gulark Centurion will uh, whip out a bow and will take a shot at you, Cochinelle. Okay. What is your AC? My AC is... Uh, God, why do you ask me these hard <laughs> questions? It's 19. All right. So he's going to roll and try and hit you. He will hit you, so you're going to take 18 points. Uh, was that a good roll on your part? I'm sorry, I can't. Uh, I rolled a 14. Um, you know, I'm going to go ahead and uh, do shield. Okay. So what? essentially it's a free action. It just goes off because it, it targeted my AC. Okay. And essentially what it is is that um, uh, you have to re-roll the attack. Okay. And then I can choose the least bad stuff of that. All right. Well, I'm going to re-roll the attack then. So I would hit with the second one um, as well. But you should have me take the second one because then I won't get a second shot. Okay. Okay. So you'll take 18. All right. Yes. Uh, with his bow, when he rolls even, he's able to take a second shot at another target. Okay. Okay, then. I'm glad that I had that skill, and I have it one more time. Woot, woot. The Iron okay. Gulark will, will come up. This wrecker comes at you. Uh, Carl, what is your uh, AC? 21. 21. All right. Let's see if I can hit you. No, he will miss. Um, and he doesn't have miss damage, so you are fine. And it is now your action. The escalation die is at one. What's your What's your decision, Black Dog? God damn it! Uh, you need to hit twelve. Um, will not do it. That's a twelve plus seven. That's a nine. Oh no, nineteen plus escalation die. So, so twenty will hit. just hit. Okay. Um, Make sure I got a. Oh, it's a plus eight anyway, so it'd be so it'd be a twenty-one. All right, okay. let's roll damage. So, oh, four d ten. 
plus 1d10 plus what is it? 4 god damn it don't like me dl 4d10 plus 1d10 so many plus. damage dice it's terrible I can't take it anymore you should roll less damage dice. It'd be much easier for you. Thirty-two, 32. points of damage. Okay, so it'll be. Okay, uh, Carl, you hit him, slam into him, and his when you do hit him, his arm sort of wicks back, and he gets another shot at you, and he mm. will hit you with that. Um, Carl, you're going to take. Ooh, and that's a eighteen plus. So he does a critical on you. Carl, you take fifty-six points of damage. Well, that's not good. Smacks into you, cracks you across the skull there with that flashback attack. Kathak. Okay, that means that I am staggered now. Okay. Excellent. Ben. Are there any other. Can't hear you, Ben. Are there any other ghouls out there? Any other. There's, there's one, one more ghoul. mook left and then. Uh, three significant opponents. No idea what you just said. Yep. I can't like point or point. Left click and hold to get the. There you go. Sure. You need to hit an AC twenty, Ben. He's in a hurricane, apparently. <laughs> Do you wish to use your reroll? Or a server room. <laughs> yeah, I'm going to use that. <laughs> <laughs> All right, make that reroll. Oh, escalation dive one, huh? Yes. Yep. Okay. So that will hit, Ben. Please roll your damage. Tomaso, you're going to be going next after I get Ben's damage? Mm -hmm. Ooh, look at uh, that. Shoot. 22 points of damage. So, Carl, you kind of stagger back from that shot, and you'll feel the whisk as a, an arrow goes past your head as uh, Kathak sinks a, a bolt into this thing's uh, skull. But it is still moving. Tommaso. Um, Lil, yes. Lil, but before you go, Lil, there's, um, once I get staggered, I get to regain one of my feats. I assume I have to do that immediately. Yeah, why don't you, what are you going to regain? Uh, in that case, I will regain my rage. Okay, sounds like a good plan. Tommaso. All right, I will uh, cast a heal on Carl. Okay. Now, Carl, you took off 20 of the temporary hit points that Matt had given you, right? Yes, I did Got that first. All right, I did good. That first. I, oh, I, was I down forgot a little that. Bit. Yeah. I was down a little bit first. Okay. And I will use one of my recovery so you don't have to use yours. Okay. Uh, actually, I can I can use mine. I'm, I'm in good shape. The story I heard at the beginning was that you guys had burned a lot of recoveries last game. No, oh, I, did. Yeah. I only burned one. No, but I, I actually... I. My armor class shoots to the roof when I run out of okay. recovery. Okay. Your choice. Okay. All right. And as you guys can see in on your character things, I put the, your recoveries in the blue bubble and your hit points in the green bubble. I actually can't see that. How do you see uh, that? If you click on your, your uh, item. Yeah? Oh, I have nothing in mind. Okay. I don't know why it didn't do that. Oh, so you get to add eight to that recovery, Carl. Mm. Looks like I can see those things on other people. 46, I just don't see it on. And okay. Eight. Oh, I know why it is. Okay. Hang I on. will drop the one, so it'll be thirty-nine. Okay. And let me make sure. Uh, advance. Show nameplate. Da da da. Control by. Save changes. Can you see it now, Sherry? Uh, yeah, I can. I'm sorry. Yes. Okay. I can. Yeah, I, I had I just, apparently I hadn't put it in there. Okay. Okay. Uh, right, so so a, you've done your quick action, quick action uh, to and then uh, that ghoul is still standing, so I can't goob my turn undead. No. Um, 
Oh, uh, I'm just going to make a melee attack then uh, against the uh, ghoul in front of me. The Centurion needed an AC 20. And what did I do? 20 versus AC. That will hit. So you do 14 points of damage. 14, and do I get anything else on that? I don't think I do. Nope, not anymore. Escalation, yep. escalation. Escalation die, yeah. yeah. If that. Okay. Is that damage? Yep. Nope, no, just no, to, don't do to damage. Hit. Just hit? Okay, yeah. then. All right. 14. Cochinelle. Okay, now I quick cast the freeze spell. Okay. Okay, which allows me to put special effects on all cold spells that I cast. Okay. And then I'm going to cast Ray of Frost again at will, fifth level. Okay. Um, at the Red and, Centurion? Uh, yeah, at the Red Centurion. Okay. So, um, and that's uh, versus PD. He did 19. Escalation die plus one. I got it. So, I hit him. Yay, yay, yay. How about your damage? Okay, so one, because I hit him, uh, he's stuck. Okay. Save ends, hard save, 16 plus. Okay. So, we'll so he can't move from there. Okay. So and then... Uh, um, let's see here. Uh, that's 68. 24 so points 24. of damage. Mm -hmm. uh, so you will hit him and freeze him to that ground. Uh -huh. There's all that water splashing around and it will kind of freeze down and crackle onto the, the, the ground around there. Uh, he does still have ranged weapons. Um, right. But uh, he is stuck in place. The ghoul will desperately try to hit Carl. The last ghoul. And he will. Carl, you are going to take six points of damage. Rook. Oh, target rich environment. Oh, Dangerous target rich environment. Seems to be the baddest baddest thing out, out there. Or the Centurion. Oh, jeez. I guess I want to... The Iron Gulark gets a free attack if you hit him and he isn't killed by it. Does he look staggered at all yet? Not quite. He's going to die this turn. It's a free hit. And then you could go again. Even when he's been ambushed? Yep. Huh. Don't worry about him. He's going to die this turn. Well, then I better save Tommaso here. I'll go behind this Gulark Centurion. Okay. You need to Stab hit him. a 20. Let's see it, Scott. Let's see. So. Uh, Your foe slaying blade. Oh. That will not okay. play it. Do you have a reroll on that attack? Yes, I do. I'll give it a try. Okay. Hey! That will hit. Roll there. your damage, sir. Thirty, so sixty points. Yes, sixty points. So that means sixty-six. So you stagger him, and he will swing around when he's staggered, and he takes a swing at you. Tommaso hit him once too. <laughs> no, but you didn't stagger him. No, Tommaso didn't stagger him. So, what is your AC? Seventeen. Seventeen. He will miss with that. Even oh. with my plus 10 to hit you. Wow. Ah! 
Escalation <laughs> die is now a two. His turn. What, what? Who's he going to swing at? He is going to swing at Scott. Oh, really? Wait, wait no. He's got to clear it. Oh, that's so hard. Oh, geez. All right. I'm going to roll a d4. One, two, Tommaso. Three, four, Scott. Scott, he takes a swing at you. <laughs> he will hit. Ouch. Um, and that was an even roll, so it doesn't do the extra bonus thing for that. You will take 21 points. Uh, and you are hampered. Hampered means you can only make basic attacks, but you can move normally. That clears on 11+. plus. Okay. Galark Centurion on... Oh, don't forget to Scott take off that 20 points that Matt gave you. Yeah, I'm trying to figure out how that... That comes... How that works with my taking half damage. Then. Well, you can take the half damage and then and then take whatever is left off that 20. So, uh, let's see. Gulark Centurion is going to fire at you again, Koshinel. Okay. Uh, uh, what's your AC? My AC is still 19. That will hit you. You will take 18 points. And he'll get a second turn in that thing. Well, then I'll do my second uh, thing of, of shield. Okay. So he will still hit and he will still get that second shot. Okay, but he does a little bit less damage. No, he still does the 18. Wait, what do you... He always does 18 damage? Yep. Is that what it yeah, is? Yeah. Oh, I'm yeah, sorry, I didn't get that. Yeah, okay. Yeah, so he does 18 damage. points damage. Okay. Matt, what is your AC? Uh, 23. Okay, he's going to take his second shot at you. Oh, that's nasty. He will hit, and you will take 18 points, Matt. All right. Did he take precise shot? Well, he didn't, he didn't roll a one. Damn! Iron Gulark on Carl. Carl, what is your AC? 21. 21. He will miss with his shot on you. Um, doesn't have any bonus. Let's see. Uh, escalation die. Um, da -da -da, nothing goes off on that. Okay, he's good. All right. Black Dog. Black Dog, I am going to declare unstoppable. Okay. Both of you are beating on each other here. Need to hit a 20. Uh, 17. Okay, the 17 will do it then. That will hit. Yes. Okay. Um, I'll hit. I should be... Okay. Roll your be damage. Okay. Um, did you add in that extra D10 damage that you were getting from the other No, thing? I have... Yes, I, I did do that. Okay, good. I was just re considering whether I should do the lethal one. I am going to do the lethal one. I'm going to reroll. Yeah. You want to try and go for the battle. crit? Let's see it. Yeah. Two, not 2d20, two 2 two or 2s20. Two okay, nope. So the first one goes. Okay. So that will hit. Roll your damage. Okay. Uh, 4d10 plus 1d10 plus 3... 35. 35. He is still up. He will take a swing at you, Carl. What is your AC? Uh, well, hold on. Um, do I now? I hit him. Do I take my recovery now, or do I take it after he hits me back? Uh, uh, which you is fine. Do, let's re I, let's I, resolve I, your yours first. Do your do all of your your action there, and then I'll take my swing at you. Let's see, two, five D twelve plus four. 48, what so minus do? the two, minus two, so 46. Oh, yeah. That's You're good. good. You're golden. And he will even miss on you when he goes to swing at you. Kathak, hmm. you're unengaged. There's the Iron Gulak on Carl. There's the Gulak Centurion that's firing a bow. And there's the Gulak Centurion that's pinned between Tommaso and Rook. And there's a ghoul. Ben, you there? Okay, I'm passing by Ben's turn. Tommaso on 16. 
All right, that ghoul plagues me, <laughs> but I, I think now they're beat up enough. I want to cast, um, uh, well, let me see, turn on oh, dead is, Tomasa. what's that? I was on mute, sorry, I'm going after Tomasa. Okay, if you go, go now. Okay, what do you want to do, Matt, uh, Ben? Um, I'll shoot at the, uh, this last, uh, I'll be right back. At the ghoul? All right. Um, are you doing your double shot? Uh, yeah. Okay. Uh, so go ahead I and roll. Do my double shot. I think I need to roll double. Uh, you need to roll an even number, I think. Not, uh, I don't think that's what it is. Let's look here real quick. Ranger. Uh, Ranger. And your double shot uh, means uh, you can decide to do two shots instead of one. Don't have to do, roll even. Double range attack? I, uh, because I can't hear you, I can't hear you if you're saying something else. You, oh. are, you're not doing an arrow attack? No, no, here, I'll type it in. Okay. Okay. No, it doesn't. You just, just make two shots. You just declare beforehand. Oh. Okay. You, right. You're thinking of chain lightning. Oh. All right. Anyway, I'll, uh, I'll I'll do my double shot. Okay. To hit the, the the ghoul that's here, you need to hit 19. Yeah, I already rolled. I rolled a 19. Okay. So go ahead and roll your damage for him. Okay, so that ghoul will drop, uh, and you can take a second shot. All right, at the um, at this dude. Okay, at the iron gulark, need to hit a twenty to hit him. Uh. That will hit. Yep. Don't forget to roll d6s for damage, not d8s. Oh, oops, yeah. Okay. All right. So that first shot I did actually did this damage. Okay, that was still will kill him. Okay. Second shot is doing. Chook. All right. He is just barely on his his feet there. Iron Gulark is badly, badly injured. Um. Cochinelle. Wait, you I know, skipped I think Tommaso. Oh, Tommaso. Tommaso. Let me go, go back to Tommaso. I'm sorry. Yeah, that's a sequence there. Oh, um, right now, I am going to cast Turn Undead. Okay. Yay. And tell me about Oh, Turn they're not Undead. getting away. They're not getting away. Turn no, Undead, not. I will um, lift my holy symbol up in the air, and the light that, it, you know, it's got magical power. The light comes off it. The light will start beaming off it. Shining on the three undead creatures here. And now, uh, where is my die roller? Why is it not coming up? Don't you mean flies spring out to consume their unholy corpse? Oh, well, I'm working with Maggots. my god. There's a magic item here. Okay. So, light at the end of the tunnel so first is thing you an need oncoming to do train. Is you I need to roll a, roll a d4. d4 first. Okay. So I get two. Okay, so that would be. And I can hit. The now, iron goo Now I get the goo. Okay, let's hear it. Because uh, I can hit anything with under 150 hit points. That would be all of the targets. All right. Um, so. So, do you want to do the Gulark? I will take the Iron Gulark and the Gulark Centurion next to me. Okay. And so it is Wisdom plus Charisma plus Level versus MD. Plus the Escalation die. So that's going to be 
four. So do the Iron Gulag first. Plus six. Plus one. Uh, what the hell is that? You did plus plus. Uh, so oh. re roll it. <laughs> oh, that sucked. So on the Iron Gulag will be unaffected by it. Roll on the Gulag Centurion. 18. Did you add the escalation dice in there? Yeah. 18. So the iron... I had my left left off that, though. So uh, I had four of those, but I don't think four matters for the... 10, eight matters for the 18, so 22. 22. So, Matt, uh, you will do the holy damage to it. What? what? Right. Uh, so, so 4d10... Uh, no, it's, uh, let's see, it's, uh, what did I hit by is what matters for Uh, this. you hit it by five. By five, so four plus is, yeah, five to ten. Uh, or four to ten. Uh, so, no, we're going down at all. Do it that way too, I guess. Four. <laughs> Twelve. Twenty points of damage? Yep. Okay, and it is dazed. So we'll put the little uh, crazy symbol on it there. Let's find. Okay. Let's see. We'll do uh, that for that. Okay. So he is dazed right now. You will lance out with that, and the the flies will start picking the flesh off of this thing. And uh, while the iron gulark is not particularly affected by it, this ghoul centurion is definitely. Uh, staggers back from that shot there. Um, and actually, hang on one second, I need to check something. Okay, and he is, by the way, he is vulnerable to uh, uh, holy damage, as are all of these things. So, when you're attacking these things with any of your holy attacks, you increase your crit range by two. So, that was Tommaso and uh, uh, Kathak Koshinel. All right. So once again, I'm going to hit him with uh, uh, Ray of Frost. Okay. Gulark Centurion, need to hit a 20 to hit him. Or a PD, 19, mm -hmm. sorry. Okay. Nope. Didn't do it. Okay. Rook. God, the Centurion's got to be almost dead. And he's dazed. He's at minus four on any of his attacks. I will sure cut him to death. Okay, let's see that attack, Scott. You need to hit a 20. What's the escalation dice now? Two. In a second, it'll be three. Oh. oh you will just miss, Scott. That's okay, he still takes. Uh... Oh, that's right. Oh, yeah. So Still takes 11 points. Still takes 11 points for you? Okay. Yeah, and miss damage for me is he takes, uh, you know, what, four? Four? So. Eight, nine. Okay. Goes to that. Um, Gulark Centurion will desperately swing at Matt. What's your AC, Matt? 23. Uh, oh, actually, I have to reroll that. It's minus four. So he will miss with that shot on you, sir. The other centurion, the one who's stuck, he's actually going to turn and take a shot on Matt. Now that he's seen the cleric burst out, holy shit, he's going <laughs> to fling that at you. So uh, he's going to try and hit Matt with an arrow, and he will also miss. Mm. Two shots there, misses with both. Iron Gulark on his last legs. <sighs> Take a desperate swing at Carl. My piety protects me, fiends. <laughs> <laughs> and your steel. <laughs> uh, what's your AC, uh, Carl? 21? 21. Well, miss! Oh, all my ah. luck is going oh, away. Come on! Black dog. I was going to take one of you guys out. That's a crit. That is a crit. 
And it's Ooh. wasted, though. It is, sort of. Roll, roll your damage. Get 10 plus 3. 72. 72. You will cut into this thing and slice it in half. It will plunge back into the, the, the water uh, and it drift downstream. Kathak, there are two targets left. The uh, Gulak Centurion is stuck in place. All right, I'm going to hit, uh, I'll hit this guy. Okay, need to hit a 20 to hit him. Turn around, swing, let it choop, drop it into him. Do you have an increased crit range with that bow? Uh, let's see. Uh, I'm going to hit him with Okay. What's up? Roll your damage, sir. Uh, hold on now. Um, yeah, no. Okay. Uh, 48. Shook! Put that last shot into him, and he also goes tearing back, screaming, drops into the water, dead. And Tommaso. Alright, um, I will cast a, uh, Javelin of Flies at the Iron Gulak. Okay. Oh, he's so dead. The Iron Gulak's Gulak. dead as well. There's only oh, so, oh, there's, uh, the Gulak Centurion then. Yes. Um, uh, so that is going to be... Versus PD or MD? Wisdom plus level versus PD. Okay, you hit 19. Plus so. 3 for the escalation die. Your crit range is increased by two. Yeah, that hits. That will definitely hit. And that will be four. That was close to a crit. So close. 3d6 plus wisdom. So plus four to that. So 10, 12, 16. 16? Okay, so he goes to 73. Um, he is staggered, but there's nobody uh, within a uh, close combat thing that he could hit with his uh, free attack, so he wastes it. Koshinel. All right, I'm going to hit him with my ray of attack. My ray. Thing. Ray of attack. <laughs> All right. My ray of my ray of at willness. 19. Okay. And oh, I got to up my. Here. Okay. I hit him. Okay. Okay, so since this guy is staggered, he's now also dazed. Okay. Whatever that means. Minus four to his attack rolls. Right. And he's, he's even more stuck. He just keeps being stuck. And then, uh, let's see here, then it's slash roll. Uh, yikes, yikes, yikes. 68. 27 points of damage? Mm hmm. Okay. All right, shook. You will blast him with that ray of frost, Rook. I will slide a dagger from my boot and throw it at him because there ain't no way I'm closing with him. Okay. <laughs> Need to hit a twenty. So nine, nine is good. It's not magic. Uh, Isolation dice is three. Ben, we're getting a little feedback from you. There we go. So that will hit Scott. Go ahead and roll your damage. Seventeen shook that will fly out there. Uh, Stagger will hit him. It sort of goes in between his uh, armor plates. He will turn 
he will take another shot with his bow trying to hit Cochinel. Cochinel, no, what is your AC? Jerk. It's the same as it ever was, 19. She says jerk. Ah, misses. Ha. That's his ass. Black dog on 25, <laughs> escalation die at 4. <laughs> Good thing I had the mic muted. Cause he said, wait, I'm going to use my cloak. But, uh, <laughs> that saved me. Oh, my God. I whiff. You completely whiff, Black Dog. But now I got 2d10. Kathak on 23. Okay, I'm gonna hit. Which one? Yeah, wait, he's wait. the only guy left. Need just, to hit just, a 20. Just, just. Let me ask. Okay, so it is. Except for Carl, he's not, he's not staggered or anything, or stunned or dazed. He's or what? staggered and dazed. Yes. But that's that doesn't respect his AC. No. Okay. Ben, that will hit. Ugh, arrows, daggers, all of that sticking out of him. He's st stuck to the ground there, but still up. Tommaso. Guy's still up, huh? Well, uh, let's see. Um, barely still up. All right, we're gonna hit him with the with the javelin of flies. Let's. So wisdom plus level versus PD. He did nineteen. Well, that's what the hell was that? That was a lot of oh. rolling. <laughs> what you were doing? Uh, 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 that was remnants of my uh, <laughs> last damage roll. That will hit, Matt. I'm, you don't even have to roll damage. He's down to below ten hit points. You will throw the javelins of flies off, and the it will the flies will reach off and pull the last of the sort of the ghoul sinew and tissue off from him, and his bones will collapse to the ground. Oh, what a beautiful vision. <laughs> the surgeon reclaims. You guys will gather yourselves together. You know that the noise is probably echoing out here. And uh, we'll, next time we'll take up with you, uh, which way you guys want to head. Onto the vault, onto the waterworks. Uh, we'll take up with that next week. Does that seem reasonable? I'm going to use a recovery. It's I'm going to use a recovery. Okay. What? It's not even 10 o'clock? No. <laughs> Damn! So, uh, mark your recovery off, Sherry, and do your roll. Yeah, I am. Six. Is anybody else below half? Ooh, 17. Awesome. Um, I don't think so. No, I'm one hit point above half. Yeah, just look at everybody's stuff. It looks like you're good. All right. I'm like one point above where I was at the start of the session this time, last time, so. What do you Thank I'm, you for the th the twenty hit points that saved my life. Yeah, I'm a lot stronger than I was when I started. <laughs> yeah, uh, and I need to fix. I think get Scott things. Scott thing wrong. I'll, I'll fix that. I think anyway. So that's it for tonight, guys. We'll take up with the mm -hmm. the rest of the the castle adventure next week. Awesome. Right. Oh, well, let me ask you because there was a lot of don't. Can we level button. up now? No. Oh. Not yet. Do we get another little boosty boost? Nope. No. Uh, so, Matt, you had a question? Yeah. There was a lot of don't roll a one tonight. Yeah. Did I ever tell you my don't roll a one story in real life? No. When my child was being born. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> All my right. wife uh, had a, a, ve I mean, a very, very long labor. Like we were going 20 plus hours. And she started suffering from placental insufficiency. Oh, no. And the doctor comes in. And he was, like, completely nonchalant. He was like, don't worry. This happens all the time. It's nothing to worry about. You know, there's a small chance the kid will have developmental uh, problems. Maybe 5%. And I said, no, unacceptable. <laughs> because I'm thinking, don't roll the one. <laughs> <laughs> Oh my God! Nice. That's... And it was basically that was the choice. Of, you know, are we going to have a cesarean section or not? And that was that was when the choice was made. And the choice was made on no. This is don't roll a one. Yeah, we're not doing that. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God! 